All right, I haven't given you guys a whole lot of content lately. It's opening week for the WNBA. I'm watching games. I'm working on my prop bets. So uh, my bad on that. But we're going to get back in the saddle here and talk knockouts. And this is probably my fourth similar upload that I've done in 2024. Essentially talking about the state of the knockouts. And we have this division here that as fans, we are always told is the best women's division in wrestling. And they take women's wrestling more seriously than other companies. And yeah, we got to be patient at the same time. But it is it is also difficult as a fan to look at the complete lack of growth in 2024 in regards to the roster, in regards to what they're doing creatively, in regards to the quality of matches that we're getting. And I've used this for you guys who listen to everything I do. You've already heard me say this. But if you watch NWA, which is the other promotion I watch pretty regularly, they're always prepared for that top person to leave. They have someone to step up and fill that position. Or they bring people in. I mean, whether it's male or female, every set of tapings, they've got someone new in there. They are freshening things up in one way or another. I'm not saying it's good or bad because I think a lot of the people they bring in aren't very good. But I'm just saying the effort is there. You know, because these are per day people they're bringing in. They're not negotiating long term deals. They're, you know, they're bringing in enough people to freshen things up. But as I said, with their women's division, they had, you know, it, it's like they knew they were going to lose Camille and they had Kenzie Page ready to go. And there's girls that they've lost in the past and they always had someone step up and ready to go. And to, you know, to to kind of double down on my NWA example, they just announced the Crockett Cut, uh, crop, excuse me, crop, whew, Crockett Cup. I'm sorry, I'm water fasting right now. You have no idea how hungry I am. I am uh, I'm off my game a little. The Crockett Cup, they announced the brackets. There are 16 teams in this thing. And 15 are part of the roster. And you're going to tell me that a smaller company like that can keep an, can have a large enough roster and keep fresh enough names coming in and out but we get this tag team division, we get this knockouts division, and they're just personnel wise appears to be no growth. And this is outside looking in because we have no idea what they've got planned, who they're talking to. We have no idea whatsoever. But this is just speaking strictly as a fan. Steph Delander is still mixing it up with Jordan Grace despite losing to her every time she's been in the ring with her this year and losing to her every time she's been in the ring with her, period. She's still there. She's still mixing up, mixing it up with her. They literally had an angle two weeks ago where Giselle Shaw has to come and save the knockouts division. The only problem is she didn't beat anybody in 2023. Nobody. I don't mean that in a literal sense. You understand what I'm talking about. She had no hot streak, no momentum. She won the Ultimate X. Unfortunately, the all the, the X is not serious. Doesn't matter if it's the X division, the knockouts, the X is not serious. Sometimes the champion wins. They usually don't. It's usually something, it's more about having the match itself, and then they blow it off as quick as possible. The person loses. You know how it goes. And I keep saying that I think Ash by Elegance, I'm pretty confident that she's going to wrestle Jordan Grace at Slammiversary. And I applaud them for not throwing her into the fire immediately like they would anybody else who just came from WWE. But man, is anyone looking forward to that? Like, Ash is not having good matches on TV right now. They're just bringing in random people to wrestle Jordan Grace. This is this is the worst 
that knockouts division has been in years. In years. There's almost no redeeming qualities about it. I'm not saying everything they do is horrible, but I mean, shit, me as a fan, at least Alicia, Alicia Edwards is a knockouts champion, and I can I can dig with that. I can ride with that. But that doesn't mean we're going to be getting Dave Meltzer five-star classics from the division. There's no match you can put together in a division right now that is going to draw any kind of money for you, unfortunately. Tasha Steeles comes, and it almost feels like, and I, I could be totally wrong, but it just feels like she wrestles and disappears for like three months and then shows up again. I could be wrong. Maybe she's at every single set of tapings, but it does not feel like she's a heavy, uh, a heavy uh, part of the knockouts division, and she should be. They just don't have anyone ready to step up. It's almost like Jordan just has to be the champion. It's like on Pop TV when Gail Kim just had to be the champion because who the hell else was going to be champ? I don't know what they're doing here. I, I believe Gail Kim put out something asking us to be patient. That help was on the way. But again, if you if you can turn on NWA, a much smaller company operating with a lot less, and they've got people coming in every set of tapings, they have people ready to go when they need to step up, and they have a 16 team tag team division. And the only team that's not part of the roster is the wild card spot that they're bringing in from the Indie Outlaws. I I just don't understand why we we're watching this, and it feels like there's no one in the division. It feels like there's no one in the tag division, which is another story for another day. I'm just using the Crockett Cup as an example to tie into this whole knockouts thing. So I haven't seen this last episode. I'm going to watch it tonight. Maybe there's this revelation where just the next step in the knockout saga is, you, you know, I, I just know that there was Zaya Brookside, queen of the rubber match versus Ass by elegance. And they were wrestling over some jewelry. So I'm not optimistic that an amazing story has been told on this episode that's going to get me excited for next week or excited for Slammiversary. I just know Jordan is wrestling random girls. Steph DeLander is being highly relied on, even though she has done nothing so far. Uh, the Knockouts title tag team title picture is more of a storyline than, um, than something centered around the wrestling, which is fine, but... I'm just saying they're not giving us a lot to sink our teeth into right now. And and you've got you you literally have Giselle Shaw coming to save the division. But what is she saving? What is she going to do? What is I I the 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 one positive I can say about this is that they've they're inserting Gail Kim into this one way or another. Maybe it's a very minor role, but at least like she's involved. Like that's there's nothing there's nothing bad about seeing that face on our television with mixing it up with the knockouts division. I'm not saying she's going to wrestle, but it's a good sign that she's involved. And um, maybe they're going for Giselle against Jordan Grace, but haven't we seen this a million times and we know the outcome? Giselle has a run in her. She has a knockouts championship run in her. But she's been around for years and hasn't even really it hasn't even come across like she might win like every time she has a title shot we know that she is going to lose but to me as a fan there's just no excuse when when probably 90 percent of these girls are getting paid in the indie rates or getting you know paid per date you're not you know negotiating three-year deals with them i just don't understand why they just can't bring girls in even if it's for a set of tapings to freshen things up you saw that they brought in uh, the the couple gals for for uh, for explosion, and the fan base on Twitter is begging, and and Ali catch as well. The, the the fan base on Twitter is begging for the company to sign them, begging. They're like, please, like, and you're gonna see that going forward. They can bring in anyone to do a explosion, and the the Twitter fan base is gonna be like, sign this girl because they are 
they are dying for some kind of new blood in this division. And they, they do this every couple of years. They do this every couple of years where the division is stale beyond belief. And, you know, by the time they update it, it's been like four or five months of watching the same girls over and over. Uh, before I sign off here, I'll never forget during one of the Impact Plus shows, Scott Demore is in a backstage segment and says, we're, you know, we're cutting edge here at Impact Wrestling. We're going to have some kind of eight knockouts invitational match. And it's like, oh, shit, you know, finally. And then he announces the the the, the match and it's the girls already on the roster. That we had already been seeing for months and months just wrestle each other over and over and over. And it's just a bad look when you're trying to tell people this is the this is the place to be for women. Like every time you get Gail Kim on an in an interview, she is saying we started the the women's revolution, which is not true. They started the knockouts division. WWE started the women's res- revolution, and it should be the only ones who take credit for that because it was a movement uh, in regard to the company. It doesn't mean that. TNA didn't take women's wrestling seriously first, but they didn't start the women's revolution. If they did, they would have had the women's revolution. But, you know, my point is, this is supposed to be the division that they look at and say, hey, this is this is the, the number one division, but it's not. It's like, it's almost dead last. It just depends what you think about AEW's women division, but it's not better than NWA's. It's not better than uh, NXT's. It's not better than WWE's. Who's who's going to step up? Who who's going to be the next girl up? How are they going to fix this division? Because Jordan Grace, she's out. You a- anyone who's not a mark knows that she's likely out. So what is the backup plan? 